and it was my first time experiencing a Singaporean Chinese New Year and it was a, a lot different. So what did I do for Chinese New Year this year? January is coming to an end and although I've been very lazy with making videos, I still wanted to kind of recap my first January in Singapore and it was filled with a lot of events actually, which is what I wanted to share in this video today. Anyway, so there were three big events that happened in January, the first one being Nick's birthday. So for his birthday, I took him out to a nice dinner. It's always been a tradition for me to bake him a carrot cake for his birthday. Not the Singaporean carrot cake, but like Western dessert carrot cake. But since we don't have our own house yet, uh, I couldn't bake him a cake this time. I guess we'll go back to that tradition once we get our home. And then just 10 days after Nick's birthday is my mother-in-law's birthday. So it was the first time I celebrated my mother-in-law's birthday. We were never like together in January before. So before we had like a family gathering, I took her out on a mother-daughter date and we went to get our nails done together. We also had dim sum for lunch and watched a movie. A few days after our little date, we had dinner with the family, including Nick's brother and his wife. And we went to a restaurant called Violet Un, which specializes in Peranakan food. This year, my mother-in-law's birthday happened to be two days away from Chinese New Year. And that was definitely one of the highlights of January for me because um, Chinese New Year is like the biggest holiday here for Chinese Singaporeans and it's also the biggest holiday in Korea. It's a three-day holiday in both countries and you know each country has its very specific traditions uh, and back in Korea I didn't really follow a lot of the traditions it was just like a quiet day for the family but here the experience was very different and it was my first time experiencing a Singaporean Chinese New Year and it was a, a lot different. So what did I do for Chinese New Year this year? Um, first off, we had a reunion dinner with all of Nick's extended family on his father's side. So it was around 30 people total. Um, so many aunties and uncles and cousins and, and all that and I can't even remember all of their faces but it was my first time meeting like the entire family and I didn't film anything because you know I was just kind of very shy there but um, it was like this 10 course meal, Chinese food and it was very hectic I guess but it was enjoyable I've never had like a huge ass family gathering like that before and it felt nice so that was just like the first reunion dinner then we got together with the immediate family we met at my brother-in-law's place and we had a traditional Chinese New Year uh, meal which is steamboat and I think originally a steamboat is supposed to be in like a round pot kind of thing with like a thing sticking out in the middle um, it's like chabu chabu or hot pot or whatever it is I think a lot of Asian cuisines have some sort of version of this uh, yeah so we had steamboat for dinner and before steamboat there is one other Singaporean tradition that I did for the first time and uh, I think the dish is called yusheng and what is the tradition called? Uh, I'll have to look it up. But anyway, it's like this noodle slash salad -y kind of dish that you put in the middle of the table. And then, um, you know, you pour all these like ingredients in it and say some nice Chinese blessings for the new year or something. I, I don't really understand what they're saying, but it's like nice stuff. And then um, once that's all said and done, everyone takes their chopsticks and then you kind of like toss the food into the air and you know say your wishes for the new year or something like what you want um, all the good things that you hope will happen and supposedly um, the person who tosses it highest has their wishes come true or something like that um, and I heard it can get like very very messy but I think for our family it was a bit mild but but yeah we don't have anything like that in Korea and that was that was definitely very new uh, and fun 
though I didn't really know what to say so I just kind of like awkwardly did the thing with the chopsticks and just followed along the motion but it was still fun so we did that and then we had the steamboat the next day we had another like big dinner then we did another Singapore tradition uh, which is very similar to the one we did in Korea but it's a bit different so you know it's wishing your elders a happy new year right so in korea what we do is the the adults will like kind of sit down and then all the younger people will kind of bow and wish them a happy new year and then we would uh, receive packets of money so the money packets are the same here um, except in china i think and in singapore they use very chinesey red envelopes instead and not only that another tradition is to exchange oranges and um, i think that's supposed to symbolize wealth or something but uh, exchanging oranges you you give an orange and you receive an orange which is really interesting so uh, i got to do that for the first time so we exchanged oranges uh, and then we exchange red packets as well and i wasn't able to um, like fully take part in the tradition because i don't know all the Chinese phrases. It's just an opportunity to wish your parents a happy new year and you know just say nice things to each other. So that was nice. Obviously I do miss my family back in Korea and we did have like a video chat and it did feel weird I guess to be spending um, Lunar New Year away from home but um, at least I have another family here so it wasn't so bad. And the last uh, Chinese New Year tradition is gambling, of course. I think gambling is also pretty is a pretty popular thing to do during the holidays in Korea. But the games are different. In Korea, it would be like Hwak uh, Tu, Korean card game that I've never learned actually. And in Singapore, it's supposed to be Mahjong. So we didn't get to play Mahjong with like the whole family. But on the last day of the four day weekend, um, Nick taught me how to play. And my mother-in-law also has like a mini tile set. So uh, we got to play Mahjong at home and I learned the rules. I still suck at it and I'm the only one who lost money <laughs> while we were playing. But now I am really eager to learn more and hopefully I'll get a lot better at Mahjong by next year but yeah so I think I kind of like ticked off all the Chinese New Year traditions in Singapore it was a very enjoyable experience now that Chinese New Year is over it's time to really start with the renovations for our house I think most renovation firms take like a very long break during the Chinese New Year's so I feel like we'll be really kickstarting things off in February oh and one last update I mentioned this in an earlier video that I was getting these like weird bug bites on my legs and I didn't know where they were coming from and it got to the point where it was like so strange that it was only happening to me and I was getting them even though there weren't any bugs around so I went to a skin specialist and the diagnosis I got was this I can't, I don't know how to pronounce it but, but basically it's it's not a bug bite, it's just some sort of inflammation it's like the swelling of fat cells in the legs or, or whatever the most annoying thing about this condition is that nobody knows what's causing it and there is no cure so basically I think my skin is just reacting to this new environment in Singapore I know a lot of Singaporeans also get skin problems when they move to like a drier country the opposite is for me I think my skin is just not used to this humid climate and staying here for a couple months um, my skin is probably just like adjusting to it so I'm trying not to think too much of it I am taking um, like medicine to help with the symptoms even though there's no cure I just need to wait for it to go away so yeah that's pretty much my January in a nutshell that's it for today's video bye